Welcome, seekers of the macabre, to the abyss of horror. Tonight we delve into a tale that has echoed through the ages, whispered by the winds and carried by the shadows of Tennessee. Gather close as we unravel the harrowing story of the Bell Witch, a legend steeped in terror and shrouded in mystery. The year was 1817 and the Bell family had settled into their tranquil life on a farm in Adams, Tennessee. John Bell, the patriarch, was a respected farmer and with his wife, Lucy, and their children, they lived in peace, or so they thought. Unbeknownst to them, a sinister force had taken root on their land a malevolent spirit that would soon reveal itself in the most horrifying ways. It began with strange noises, unexplained knocking on the walls, chains dragging across the floor, and the sound of rats gnawing at the bedposts. The bells were perplexed but dismissed these disturbances as the creaks and groans of an old house. However, the phenomena escalated quickly, and what started as mere annoyances soon turned into a living nightmare. One night, John Bell awoke to find his bed covers being ripped off and an invisible force choking him. His daughter Betsy was not spared either. She was violently slapped and pinched by unseen hands, her screams piercing the night. The spirit seemed to have an intelligence and a voice, often speaking in a raspy whisper. It revealed itself to be none other than the Bell Witch. The Bell Witch claimed to be the spirit of Kate Batts, a neighbor of the Bells with whom John Bell had a land dispute. Kate Batts was known for her eccentric and vengeful nature, and it was said she had cursed John Bell on her deathbed. They even called upon prominent figures like General Andrew Jackson, who later became President of the United States. Jackson himself visited the Bell Farm, and his entourage experienced the witch's wrath firsthand. Horses refused to move, and Jackson's men were physically attacked by the unseen force. Jackson reportedly left, declaring, I'd rather fight the British than face the Bell Witch again. The Bell Witch's torment was relentless. It seemed to have a particular loathing for John Bell and Betsy. It tormented John daily, causing him severe physical and mental anguish. His health deteriorated rapidly, and the witch would often mock and curse him, vowing to kill him. As for Betsy, the witch vehemently opposed her engagement to a local boy named Joshua Gardner. Whenever the two were together, the witch's attacks intensified. As the years dragged on, John Bell's condition worsened. The witch's curse seemed inescapable. And on December 20, 1820, John Bell was found dead. Beside his bed was a vial of strange, dark liquid. The family summoned the doctor, who identified the liquid as a potent poison. The Bell Witch gleefully claimed responsibility, boasting that she had finally killed John Bell. John Bell's death did not end the witch's torment. At his funeral, the witch was heard laughing and singing joyously, mocking the grieving family and friends. She
she continued to haunt the Bell family and the community intermittently, leaving a legacy of fear and mystery that persists to this day. The legend of the Bell Witch remains one of America's most enduring and terrifying ghost stories. The Bell Witch Cave, located near the old Bell Farm, has become a site of eerie fascination. Visitors report strange occurrences and the feeling of being watched as if the witch's malevolent spirit still lingers in the shadows. So, dear viewers, as we close the book on the tale of the Bell Witch, we leave you with this question. What if the Bell Witch is still out there, waiting, watching, and ready to haunt those who dare to disturb her rest? What if her curse transcends time, reaching out to claim new victims? Share your thoughts and your darkest fears in the comments below. Until next time, remember to like and subscribe. And always, always beware the shadows, for they may conceal more than you ever dared to imagine.